recently moved and when I was looking for a new house, one of the big things I wanted was a pantry in my kitchen because the last house I lived in for the past eight years didn't have a pantry, nowhere to put my fucking food. However, if I had seen this movie prior to looking for a new house, I may have not put so much stock in that pantry. Shut In is brought to us by director DJ Caruso and stars Rainy Qualley, Jake Horwitz, and Vincent Gallo. When a young mother is barricaded in her pantry by her violent ex-boyfriend, she must use ingenuity to protect her two small children from escalating danger while finding an escape. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room and that would be that yes, this movie is made by The Daily Wire. And while The Daily Wire is typically political in nature, they have branched out in the past year or so and started making movies. This is their second second movie that they've made, the first one being Run, Hide, Fight, which I reviewed about a year or so ago when it came out. I myself, I did not see that movie as particularly political in nature, however, yes, I can see how some people could say that it was. This movie, however, I don't really see how anybody could see it has any political undertones whatsoever. Now, that being said, much like I said with the Run, Hide, Fight review, if someone wants to find something, they're going to find it, so I'm sure someone out there is going to say something about this movie is political. Honestly. I don't know what the fuck, nor do I give a fuck. As far as I'm concerned, this is a movie. I am a movie reviewer, so I am reviewing this movie. I'm not reviewing it from the standpoint that this is made by the Daily Wire, that being a positive or a negative. I'm reviewing it just as a movie like I would any other. I don't give a shit what personal political beliefs the people that made this movie have as long as they don't come into the movie, which as far as I can tell, they don't. So once again, this movie is made by the Daily Wire, and no, I don't give a fuck. So with all that out of the way, Let's talk about this movie. So the trailer for this movie looked pretty neat. I mean, I was down with it. It looked kind of like a home invasion flick. However, I was surprised to find that that's really not what the movie is. Actually, the title of the movie is much more indicative of what the movie really is about than what the trailer portrays. The trailer makes it seem as if our main character, Jennifer, played by Rainy Quayley, is locked in her pantry by some home invaders while they hold her kids hostage because they're looking for some money. And while yes, that does come into play in the movie, a great deal of the movie isn't even about that. It's about her being locked in this pantry and she just can't get out. You see, the house that Jennifer and her two young children reside in is really old. And the pantry has this really big, heavy-duty door that closes behind you if you don't hold it open. When Jennifer accidentally gets locked in this room, her young daughter on the other side of the door can't open it, so she's stuck in here trying to figure out how she can get to her children. And it's not just her young daughter, Lainey, who looks to be about four or five, but also her young son, who is upstairs, who's a baby. So now Jennifer has to coach Lainey through taking care of the baby and herself and trying to figure out how to get out of this room. And yes, some other people do turn up who are after her and her kids and make it more difficult for her to get out at some point. There's a lot more of the movie that doesn't even include these other characters. It's just her stuck in here and she can't get out. And these parts of the movie are a lot more interesting than you think that they would be. And the slow mounting desperation that raises as the movie goes on that Jennifer has is very understandable and pretty nerve wracking at times. She hears her kids like running around the house and things going wrong and she can't get to them. Being a parent myself, I understand that. That would like be terrifying if I knew that something bad was happening with one of my kids and they were just right there out of reach and I just couldn't get there to do something about it. The movie does a really good job of illustrating this for us. You feel for this character. You feel really uneasy and unnerved while she's locked behind this door and you really just want her to get out and get to her kid. And on top of that, Jennifer is kind of new to this whole parenting thing. Apparently, Jennifer is a recovering drug addict and she wasn't even taking care of her kids for a long time. Her grandmother, who recently passed away, whose house that they are in, was taking care of her kids, but she decided to get cleaned up so that she could go take care of her kids and she's kind of struggling with all that. Jennifer doesn't seem like a bad person, but she doesn't seem like the best mom in the world either. You can tell that she hadn't been doing this for very long. She is trying, but she makes a lot of understandable mistakes. There are times in this 
this extremely stressful situation when she snaps on her kid because the kid makes a very understandable mistake for a four or five year old. And I did like that the movie showed this. It put her in a bit of a bad light at these times. And I like that because as a parent, we've all lost our cool with our kids before and went a little bit too far and then regretted it immediately. And given the situation and everything that is going on in it, it's understandable that this character would be frustrated and just kind of at her wit's end. I like that it betrayed this character as a very flawed character. She is far from perfect and that made her all the more relatable. We do at one point get some other characters that come into the story that are up to no good. When these other characters show up and these things start to happen, it's still interesting, yeah, but it's like the whole dynamic of the movie suddenly changes. I'm not gonna say it changes for the worse or anything, but it is just different. We go from a very simple yet believable and pretty terrifying situation that could happen to anybody at any time to a much grander, higher stakes situation that, well, yeah, I guess this situation isn't out of the realm of believability and it could happen. It doesn't seem quite quite as likely to happen as the original situation that was going on. That's not to say that it's bad. I was still enjoying the movie during these parts of the film, but something about that first part and its simplicity and how it could actually happen to anybody, I really like. This movie's fairly simple. We got a lady who's stuck in a room and she's trying to get out of it. That's about it. What really sold the whole thing wasn't even necessarily the story, but the characters. They actually had some real depth here. Jennifer is a character which is, as I said, extremely flawed but she's a character you can really get behind. Rainy Qualley did a really good job as this character. Her performance was very sincere and I believed her as this character. Jake Horowitz and Vincent Gallo play the other two adult characters in the film and they were both fine. They don't play as big a role as I was expecting, but what they do have to do is fine. Gallo at times goes a little bit over the top, but I guess it kind of fits the character that he's playing, so it's okay, I suppose. Now the other character I want to talk about real quick would be Lainey, Jennifer's young daughter, played by Lucy. Luciana Van Dyke. Anytime you get young kids in a movie, you never know what you're gonna get, especially if they play a pretty predominant role. And Lainey does have a fairly large role in the film. And I gotta say that Van Dyke did a pretty damn good job here. This kid acts just like a four or five year old would. Some of the crazy off the wall shit this kid says in these really out there situations is exactly how kids would react. It was probably the most real thing in the whole movie. Like some crazy shit could be going on and this kid's gonna walk up and be more concerned about like some fucking apples over all this other crazy shit going on in the house. That's exactly what kids that age do. She's very believable. She was never grating or annoying. She did a great job here. Whether she has a career beyond child acting, I don't know. But as a child actor, she's doing a great job portraying a young child on screen in a believable way. Now there are some parts of the movie, especially later on in the film, that it does feature some pretty heavy religious undertone. It's not throughout the entire movie or anything. It's mainly centralized to one part of the film, and I never felt like they were cramming it down my throat or anything. It is, however, very in your face. Like I said, I never felt like it was too much or anything. I mean, it's religion. People out in the world have religion. It's okay to talk about it in film. If you want to say that that offends you, I'm okay. I'm sorry to hear that, but it's a thing. People have religion, and they are allowed to talk about it. Do I 100% agree with all the imagery and things religious-wise that show up in this movie? Well, honestly, that's my own own fucking business, not yours, just like your beliefs are yours. But if it's in a movie and it's not cramming it down your throat and it's just showing that this person on screen is having a religious moment, so the fuck what? It's okay. It doesn't like pull you out of the movie. Yes, it's there, but do I think it's gratuitous? No, I don't. Now the ending of this movie, which I'm not going to spoil here, we're just going to talk in very vague terms, was slightly disappointing to me. Disappointing might not be the right word, but it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. I didn't expect it to be like wildly different from what we got. And overall, I mean, it was fine. I was okay with it. It was more or less what I expected to happen. But given how the rest of the movie went and seeing as how this premise was a little bit original, I mean, at least to a degree, I was hoping for something a little bit more from the ending. But what we get with the ending is, like I said a moment ago, just what you expect. Is it satisfying on some level? Sure, yeah, it is. I mean, overall, I was fine with it. But the ending of the movie is just 
just the same kind of ending that we get from these kinds of movies. And I was just hoping that we would have had something a little bit different. As it stands though, it's fine. Guys, Shut In was a fairly basic idea that was executed really well. It's got some really good performances and the story is a lot more interesting than it sounds like it would be. And while it does somewhat de-evolve into your average thriller flick by the end, it was still a really entertaining ride and absolutely worth streaming. Across the street. This movie gave me something a bit different than I was expecting, and then it just went to what I was expecting. That being said, I did still enjoy it, and if you're looking for a well-acted, very well-executed thriller for the night, then check out Shut In, and I think you're gonna have a pretty good time for the evening. So there it is, guys, my review of Shut In. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you wanna help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below and become a jarhead and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with that, like these guys, and possibly join my top tier and become a bad motherfucker like my man Greg C and Dragon Con. If you like video games or you just want to see this dumbass prancing around like an idiot for a while, then check out my new gaming channel, Jag. Link in the description. Any support is appreciated. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Kalamazoo. There's a lot of money. There's thousands of dollars in the pantry. Have it all. <laughs> Okay, so if you made it this far, then you either really liked the video or you really hated it and you're here just trying to get as much ammunition against me as you can before you go down to the comment section. And can I just real quick say why? It's a movie, people. It's made by The Daily Wire. If you don't like The Daily Wire and you're not going to like this movie before you even see it, then just don't watch the movie. Why are you even watching reviews for a movie that you're going to inherently dislike because of the company that made it? Me, myself, I don't give a shit who made it. I give a shit how the finished product is. Did I like this movie or not? Not what beliefs does someone who made it have? I don't give a fuck what they believe. I don't care what they do in their spare time. I care about this movie. And some people will say that's a wrong way to go about it. You should care about what the people that make these forms of art do in their spare time. And hey, you know what? Good on you. Go for it. If you want to care that much about what other people are doing, you go right ahead. But me, I'm not going to. I ain't worried about DJ Caruso, Ben Shapiro, those are the only names I know. I don't know. The other people that are involved in this movie, I don't know what the hell they do, what they believe, what they're doing, and I don't care. I care about this movie and if it was good or not. That is my job, to watch a movie and review it, and that is what I did here. And with that, I release you into the comment section to do your best and or worst. Real quick before I go though, I do want to let everyone out there that wants to leave a negative, scathing, or mean comment on this video or any of my videos know one thing. Much like I said, I don't give a fuck who made this movie, I also don't give a fuck about your dumbass mean comment. Hit it, Rodney. Can we, can we all get along?